Hello and welcome to this demonstration of loading a model with pure bending and with torsional loading in ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. In this demonstration we'll show the application of two loads in different load steps so that we can isolate the contributions of two different kinds of loads on a model. You'll see the control of load steps and when the loads are applied and removed and you'll observe the kinds of stress and deformation that result from bending loads versus torsional loads on a simple bar. We commence on the workbench project page and we drag and drop a static structural system out in the project schematic. We load the chosen geometry, we go to model, right click and edit. Here's our model. It's just one simple long bar. If we check meshing in this, we'll want a fine mesh to get a reasonable representation of the torsional behavior, as well as some accuracy in bending. So we raise the relevance here, and we also set the relevance center to medium instead of the default course. Let's go to mesh now, right click, and generate a mesh. These are high order elements, so they'll give a first order representation of how this thing is going to behave. Certainly a more accurate representation than if we only had one layer of elements through the thickness of this long rod. Let's go down to static structural. Now you can notice that two loads have been applied on this model. Our first load is bending. It's going to put a pure bending moment into this long rod because the other end up here is a fixed support. Now this pure bending moment, you might notice, if we go here, has been applied in the first load step. So at the end of load step one, we have a thousand newton millimeters on the end of this beam. If I go below that, we've inserted another moment, and we've called it torsion. If I click here so that you can see what the load looks like at the end of the second load step, we have a 500 newton millimeter torsional load. These are both moments. It's their direction in relation to the body that we're deforming that gives us the meaning that one of them is a bending load while the other is a torsional load. If I go up to analysis settings, note that the number of steps has been set to two. Let's go back down. The fixed support exists in all load steps. It's up here on the far end. The bending load, you'll notice it's around the x-axis, the global x, and it hits a thousand at the end of the first load step and then disappears back down to zero in a second load step. The other moment which causes torsional deformation is about the global z-axis and is 500 newton millimeters and you can see the direction in which it acts in comparison to the body. Let's go down to solution now, right click and solve this model. Here's an output object, it's the total deformation and you can see that it has been set to be at one second, the end of the first load step. So here is our pure bending deformation. We've turned on the undeformed wireframe, so we have a sense of what the deformation looks like. Let's look at it from the side, and you can see that it has bent the way pure bending would be expected to cause it to deform. Here's the isometric view, and let's check the stresses. You see the stresses are also at time 1, so these are the stresses caused by pure bending. Other than slight end effects in this model, you can see a constant state of stresses with the stresses dropping to virtually zero on the midplane of this bar in pure bending. If I go on to the second stress object, you'll see this is at display time 2 and note the torsional deformation. That torsional deformation has slight end effects, but it's pretty much constant in the interior of this long beam under pure torsion. Let's look at the deformation, and of course the deformation is greatest at the end, and it's the kind of deformation you'd expect a torsional load to produce. Let's look at the end, and you can see that it is in a pure torsion, whereas if I look at the side, 
It's zero here and builds up linearly as we go down the length of the object. One other thing we could look at is the fixed support and check its reactions. Drop that here, go to force reaction, right click, evaluate results. And we can see that while our force reactions are virtually zero, we do have moments. So we probe for a moment reaction at the fixed support, right click and evaluate all results. And now we'll see that at the end of the first load step, we have a moment reaction of minus 1,000, equal and opposite the applied moment, and the others are virtually zero around y and z. While about the x-axis, we have that moment reaction of minus 500, fighting the applied moment, the torsional load, right here. So we are seeing the kinds of moment reactions we'd expect, and our force reactions are virtually zero, as would be expected. Thank you for joining me in this demonstration of two different kinds of loads applied at different times by controlling load steps.